Hello, welcome to Gospel in Action. So this will be the last video of this series. In this video, we, the true followers of Christ, will learn how to reach and win Hindus to Christ, having gained all this knowledge about their religion. It is definitely not going to be easy to convince them that God is one and even the path to him is only one that is through Jesus Christ alone. Jesus said that he is the way, the truth and the life and that no one comes to the father except through him in John chapter 14 and verse 6. So without wasting much time, let us get to the video. If you are a first time visitor, then I request you to please hit that like button to support us with this mission. If the videos are helpful, please subscribe to this channel. Do not miss another video. Just like people from any other religion, it is difficult for even the people belonging to the Hindu religion to understand the gospel and come to Christ. Here, it is a different challenge for them when compared to the religions like Islam. Hindus do not have an issue with accepting Christ as Lord. Yes, don't get me wrong. But like I said in the last video, Hindus do not have conflict with anything in this world as long as it is not disturbing their own personal faith. They accept everything, even if the two scriptures or even two religions are entirely contradicting in nature. This is because they believe that there are different kinds of people and they all belong to unique and different spectrums or wavelengths. They believe that these differences can reflect the way they understand God as well. Hence, for them, it is acceptable if two individuals have unique and contradicting belief systems. What do we understand by this? We understand that the Hindus do not really know who God is. And not just that, Hindus believe that no one in this world can know about God because they strongly believe that God, even if he exists, he has not revealed himself to any person in this universe. What Paul proclaimed in Acts 17 verse 23 rightly applies to all Hindus. This is what the verse says, for as I passed along, and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. Say amen to that. Hence the Hindus can perfectly coexist in a society if no two people have the same belief system. This they call as religious tolerance. As I said in the last video, it is perfectly acceptable to them if any individual has fewer moral values than themselves or even no moral values for that matter. So then why do we see heavy persecution of Christians in India? This is because the Hindus see a huge threat to their religious freedom, especially by Christians and Muslims. This is because only these two religions have a belief system that there is only one path to God and everyone must follow that path to be saved. In other words, only Christians and Muslims pose a threat and create a disturbance to their own personal and unique individualistic 
faith. They have a much larger threat from Muslims because sometimes Muslims become radicalized and even do not hesitate to kill people in order to save them from further sinning and as a result further torment in hell. But Christians would never do that. Jesus taught us to love even our enemies in such a manner that even they be won over to Christ. So Christians are the softer and easier targets for the Hindus to persecute. These Hindus that are violent are a different group. But in general, Hindus are the most religiously tolerant people in the whole world. However, because of the threat they are facing, some of them divided from among themselves to defend their religion and persecute those people from whom they think they have this threat. This divided group is called Hindutva. Today, just as the people belonging to the extreme ideology in Islam, that is the people of the radical Islam are considered the terrorists of the world, even this radicalized Hindu group named the Hindutva is also now being identified as a terrorist organization as we speak. In fact, it is the people of Hindutva who try to demonize the image of Christ among the Hindus by producing false stories about him that he is a racist, a psychopath and a maniac. So please be aware of this fact. Anyway, the point we are to discuss here is how do we communicate and win Hindus over to Christ? Again, a disclaimer here is wherever I mentioned Hindus in this entire video series, I was only talking about the Hindus who are not yet radicalized by the terrorist group of Hindutva. So how do we let Hindus know the truth that there are two worlds and hence two worldviews. Like I said in the last video, we the believers are living in this world but are not of this world. Our citizenship is in heaven and we are here as ambassadors of Christ. Then there are the rest of the people of the world. This list includes the Muslims as well who are all unbelievers and who belong to this world. They have no other place that they can call home. They live and die in this world. So this is why I said there are two worlds and two worldviews. So how then can we win Hindus over to Christ? Like I said, even here there is no shortcut. Ask yourselves the same question. How did you come to Christ? I asked myself the same question. As a former Hindu, how did I come to Christ? My testimony says it all. There are two reasons on why I chose to leave one of the world's religions to follow Christ. First, the love of the church and second, the physical experience of the Holy Spirit. So to answer the question of this video on how to reach Hindus, because we cannot control or give any other person the experience of the Holy Spirit as it is unique to us, the only option that is left with us to reach the Hindus is to love them. Just love them as they are. Just accept them as they are. Just keep building that relationship with them. There is no other way. But make sure to let them know what you believe and why you believe. This is very important. Make sure to let them know your testimony. And as the time passes, when they come to a stage in their lives, that is when they witness a lowest point of their lives, that is when they know that they are not really going to lose anything, they might come back to you and ask the reason for your hope. That is the time for you to share your journey with Christ. You would know whether they are genuinely asking for your advice or whether they want to use that information 
to work against you. You would know that. What did Peter say in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15? He said, in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Yes, this is the only way I came to Christ when I was at the lowest point in my life. That is when I was going through a very painful divorce. I was contemplating suicide in January of 2013. A couple of months later, my pastor at that time looked for that opportune time, obviously taking help of a lot of prayer, made sure that I safely crossed the bridge from that tremendous darkness, a dark religion with no hope to marvelous light, full of hope. Following Christ is not a religion like most people misunderstand. I can't believe because I'm shocked and sad to see so many Christians belonging to Christianity are literally waiting to be taken into the place of eternal torture, the lake of fire. That is a sad reality. I pray and hope you are not one of them. We are not Christians because we belong to Christianity. We are Christians because we belong to Christ. He purchased us with his precious blood. So we are to live not for ourselves anymore, but for him who died and raised again for us. This is according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15, one of my favorite verses. So why does the incredibly powerful word of God will have little to no effect on Hindus? Yes, the word is incredibly powerful. But as I said, the Hindus will have no conflict with it as long as it does not disturb their own personal and unique belief system. Remember, I told you about their belief that unique people will have unique spectrums or wavelengths, right? My family and the whole extended family who are all Hindus, even to this day, think that I liked this religion and so I am following it according to my spectrum or wavelength. Though I know that I do not belong to any religion for the world, I belong to Christianity. Unfortunately, it is a crude reality. I can't help it. People literally cannot assume anyone to have no religion at all. It's unfortunate. Anyway, knowing that my family will not have a conflict with my belief system, I made sure that they all consistently know that they need to have conflict with my beliefs. Yes, I made sure that they all know what my stand is on various aspects of this world, be it politics or religion. I made sure that my parents know to respect the rules of our home whenever they visit. It was necessary to do that. Not that by doing all this, I will be happy. No, all this is an intentional effort to continuously make them aware that we, the followers of Christ, belong to a different world and that there must be a need for them to have that consistent conflict in their minds with the way we lead our lives. But at the same time, we we must make sure that we unconditionally love them and fulfill their every desire except the matters of their blind faiths. Many people have this wrong understanding that if we love any person or people group, we must love their beliefs and practices as well. No. For example, we love our gay friends and invite them to our churches and homes, but we must never give them even a hint that we are in acceptance with their sinful practices. We must make sure that they are 
always aware that we stand against their fleshly desires in such a way that they feel that conflict continuously. But at the same time, they must know that we will be there and can go to any extent to help them in their times of need or trouble by maintaining this continuous conflict with them and being available to help them no matter what we are planting seeds into their lives that one day they get convicted of their sin repent of their deeds and come to christ with no other option left the same should be our relationship with our hindu friends and family we must first build relationships with them and make sure that they don't run away for wrong reasons. Some foolish Christians focus only on certain words without first building relationships with them. The only words that come out of their mouths are hellfire and brimstone. When will they ever learn to follow Jesus Christ? Didn't Jesus build relationships and love the people first before preaching the truth? Take the example of the woman at the well in John chapter 4. Learn from it. Or take the example of that prostitute whom these people came to stone her. What did Jesus say to her? How did Jesus react in such situation? Go read your Bible. Build relationships first. Do something for them first. Do some good deed. Help them. Invest yourselves into their lives first. And then when the opportunity comes, then preach the truth. Don't just barge in without knowing the person at all with the truth or the word of God. No, don't do that. All Christians who do that thing without first building relationships with the people who are lost are all foolish, are all driving those people away from Christ, in fact. Well, it is only because of such foolish Christians that the entire mission of Christ is failing in India. My parents had a terrible experience throughout their lives with Christians. My father used to hate all Christians and hence he chose to not even talk with me for one and a half years after I came to Christ. He indeed mentioned that whoever did this to me did it purely out of his selfish motive. Please go and read my first pastor's book to find out about his motive. He made sure that he mentioned my story in his book. I'm so glad he chose to do that. It is better if you find out for yourselves in his own words. The title of his book is The Stranger at Our Shore, How the Immigrants and Refugees Strengthen the Church. The book is available for purchase. Go get it. Anyway, the opinion of my parents on all Christians changed finally after they met my wife, Samantha. They were genuinely surprised by the Christian love she showers on them on a daily basis. No one in this whole world tells my mother, I love you, except my wife. Even I don't, because that's not the culture. Anyway, to conclude this video and with it the series, it is love love and only love and even more love that can touch and change even the hardened hearts of Hindus. There is definitely no shortcut. I am a work in progress in this myself and I am learning a lot from my incredible wife. So I hope you all are blessed by this incredible video series. I am glad I am ending this on a good note. When we come back next time, I will plan to complete John chapter 7. And after that, let us pick up a book to study from the Old Testament. I am hoping that you all, whoever is watching this video, take to heart everything I have mentioned in this video. For some, it might be convicting. For some, it might be a reassurance or reconfirmation. But what I shared is the truth of the Bible. No one will tell you these things. Please change your ways if you are not already doing what I said. Love, love, and only love. That's all. Anyway, let us finally end this video and with it the series. We'll meet again next week. Until then, 
Stay tuned to Gospel in Action and to know more about me, please find my testimony and my contact details in the description below. Remember, this series is done with a lot of research and preparation. Do you know why? Because God loves you and so do I. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you.